All right. Hey, guys, welcome. Welcome to a Saturday drawing time. Thank you guys so much for being here. I am excited to be here at Lightbox and going to be sharing with you guys today just, uh, just a lot of fun drawing tips. So the idea while you guys are here is just make sure you are ready to draw. This is a drawing session. This session is not just, uh, I mean, if you wanna just sit and watch, you're more than happy just to sit and watch and just take in any sort of knowledge that you can. But I really just wanna make sure that you guys are drawing and at the end of this, hoping that you'll use this practical knowledge in order just to keep pushing you uh, a little bit further forward in what it is that you're trying to achieve. So the techniques that we're gonna be doing today, I'm just gonna cover some basics just so that we get started and I'll walk you through those. And then at the end, if there's time, we'll open it up to some q and I know there's a lot of stuff going on here at Lightbox. If you have to, I hope you don't leave, you'll be ruining You'll be ruining your skills if you leave this. It's so an hour, but if we have to stay, um, we might go a little bit longer just because that's the way the nature of how I usually go. I usually run a little bit longer. All right. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you here and we're going to move into some design principles in order for you to do this effectively. All right. So let me share my screen here with you. Let me go up here, it got the share. Let me make sure all that's good. Okay, um, just before we get started here, I do just want to say uh, just a couple things that your art that your art doesn't have to be right the first time on this. Okay, this is very important for you guys to just keep in mind. Don't feel the pressure that you have to just nail this straight away. You don't. We never do in our artwork. It's just not the case. This is all exploration. We want to just try to figure things out, discover things. We're going to make some happy little mistakes, happy little accidents uh, that are going to happen from this, and that's what I want to encourage more than anything. And also just to understand from my perspective that I can't envision, and I don't know if you can, what the end result of my artwork is going to be. Whenever I start something and when you guys start your drawings today, I just want you to understand that that you may not have that vision of what it's going to be. I don't either. The thing is just to experiment, explore, and just see where this is going to take you. All right. So what we're going to be covering today is the phenomenon called paradiolia. All right, so that is where you're starting to see faces and things in shapes. And I'm sure you've seen it many times. You may have seen it on your shower curtain. You may have seen it on the floor. Anyway, you might have even seen it in a bagel or, 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 or in your coffee. All of a sudden you saw a face, right? So it's in clouds especially. And that's what we're working on today is taking shapes and letting our mind expand, explore, and just create something just completely different from on what's actually there and just lead us into that. All right. But let's go through some basics here. All right. These are going to be some very basic things. And I hope that you sort of like draw some of these notes. You can even take a screen grab if you want and just know that this is going to be recorded and it will be on the light box. It's also going to be on my YouTube channel, which is uh, Silver Tunes. So you'll be able to find it there. But the first thing that I want to talk about today is just pattern organization when we're looking at shapes. So pattern organization is going to be about really playing with, you might have some big shapes, you might have some medium shapes, you might have some small shapes. That's what we want to think about. We want to try to avoid what I what just doing like a little traffic light through here. We don't want to make all our shapes just so even and what I call avoiding the ladder. We don't want to make things even even in our design. Why? Because it just starts to destroy the essence and the feeling of what that and, and just the appeal of a design. There are going to be those moments where you can, but if you in your mind, if you just know that I'm not going to do that, I'm going to avoid that. That's what you want to do. The next thing that you want to make sure that in pattern organization is just avoiding what I call the bowling ball. We just don't want everything to be exactly the same. So how can we vary that? Well, maybe I might make two eyes a lot bigger and make my nose smaller. Maybe I might make two small eyes and a larger nose. It doesn't matter what the character looks like. This is a very simple explanation, but just think about how you can play with that contrast. I might even say I was gonna draw a mouth. I wouldn't just necessarily wanna draw a mouth like this. I might end up making a mouth a little bit longer 
longer through there. I might make the mouth just, uh, it could even, well, this one was going long, maybe on this one here, I might even make it just a little bit smaller. So now I'm starting to play with variation in my design. That's starting to create the appeal. And the thing that we want to avoid most is clutter within the pattern organization. So try to avoid where it's the biggest thing that sort of kills design. And I see it all the time when people are designing their characters and there's so much clutter in, inside of their, their shape that they're doing that it can't even read anymore. So the goal that we're just trying to achieve is let's just try to make those shapes. We can play around with that variety, but just try to give it just a little bit more breathing space. And that's that white space that you see in your design. So try to think about that as much as you can. All right. And then hierarchy in design. Let's just talk about that. Where, where do you want our focus to be? And it could be very simple. I, I might, maybe I might be drawing a character and they're really big and I'm just going to draw this little head in there. Well, clearly when I'm looking at this design, my attention isn't going here so much as I'm going to be looking at this big shape first. That's where my eye is being drawn towards. So it's very important when you're thinking about things, how can you play that hierarchy? Maybe I'm drawing um, a little cowboy character or something here. All right, got this guy and I got his mustache. All right, so maybe what I want is the hierarchy is in his hat. I'm going to make his hat that much bigger because I really want to make sure that you're just paying attention to this hat. So your eye is going to go towards that sense of the design before you start seeing anything else. All right. The, the next thing that I want you guys just to keep in mind as you're doing this is the rough sketching. This is going to be a rough, we were doing this just for an hour. So rough sketching is try to keep your hand on the paper, just move it around and just, you end up just seeing where your, your character ends up going, you know, with that. Don't feel that you need to draw everything just so clean, so clear that you're just trying to mark all these shapes perfectly, because what that's going to do is just slow you down. So we don't want to do that. So allow yourself to get into that rough sketch phase of your designs. All right. The next thing that we want to focus on is drawing through in our designs. What does that mean? Let's imagine that I just have a circle through here, and this is going to be a head shape. And maybe I got some guy's shoulders that are going to be up here. Instead of just drawing a shape right here and then drawing another shape over here, which becomes common, you start to see that all of a sudden it starts to take an incline or it could take a decline uh, where it's going in your design. What we want to do is just build up our habit of just drawing through our shape. So I can just draw all the way through my shape right there. And then I can start to erase any aspects of my design. If I was going to just draw, if I just had a, a circle here and I'm just starting to, um, and, and I want to draw that circle on a mat, I might be doing something like this where I'm drawing all the way through my shape. And now I've drawn all the way through my design and it's just going to make a lot more sense in your composition and when you're designing. So always keep that in mind. That was one of the biggest things that I didn't realize when I was younger was drawing through. I didn't understand it and my drawing suffered because of that. All right. The next thing we're going to want to focus on is angles. So whenever you're playing with your angles, try to not make everything in your design. Again, it's almost like the ladder just so even in your design, because this can just start to kill your drawings and make them boring. So what I want to do and what I recommend that you do in your designs is just try to find some um, angles. Maybe I might have my nose going, my eyes going that way. My nose is going this way. Maybe my mouth is going even in that direction. My chin could be going in this direction a bit. Just by doing something like that is going to start to create just a little bit more appeal in my designs and especially when it comes to drawing the human figure so what we want to do is play with the tilts of the human figure instead of just having the shoulders straight and having the hips straight like this and just doing something like that okay that serves its purpose for one way of drawing but really if we apply just tilts in the design and do something like this now all of a sudden what i'm creating is a little bit more feeling and movement in my character in a nice rhythm. And I might even counter my face. My face will go in this different uh, angle too. So look at this zigzag that's starting just to happen within your drawings. So try to find those angles wherever you can. 
All right. The next thing we want to focus on is the golden section. It's something that I teach a lot in my academy is just to break up your parts. We don't want to make everything just so even in our design and just cut our design right in half. Because again, that can kill our design. It can kill our composition. So where can we find the golden set? The golden section, I want you to think about it like this, like a fridge and a freezer. If I take my fridge and freezer, Think about how that's broken up like that. That's almost like the golden section. All right. So we start to break that one to 1.618 is the sort of uh, uh, proportions that it is. But you're not going to you know, necessarily start pulling out uh, uh, numbers and thinking that as much as just trying to get that idea that I want to break things up. So, for example, let's just use that cowboy instance again. Maybe I'm drawing a cowboy shape or doing something, where can I break up that golden section? I could, if I just start with my basic shape, I could do it in two ways. Instead of just cutting my drawing in half, I can say, okay, the refrigerator and freezer, let me do that. So I'm going to break that shape up and then I'm going to put my hat way up there. And then I can start to build the rest of my character that can start to add some appeal into the design. But look what we can do when we break it up the other way. I'm going to flip the fridge and freezer. So all of a sudden now I got the fridge up top and the freezer on the bottom. And now my hat is going to be way down here. And now I have my cowboy's uh, face all the way you know, down here. So now again, I'm breaking up my proportions in a nice way that's going to give my designs a little bit more appeal. And then the last thing I just want to say is that you must draw something. Please draw something. It, even if you feel like, man, this is crappy. This sucks. This is going horribly wrong. It doesn't matter. Just draw something. You're going to feel that much better at the end of this uh, session when you do it. I do just want to mention, because there's going to be no way I can see your guys' work unless you guys just hashtag Silver Drawing Academy. Um, go ahead and do that at the end of the session if you're going to post it on Instagram or anything. Um, a cat, a cad, a cad Emmy. Sorry, a cad Emmy. All right. So hashtag Silver Join Academy. That way I can see what you guys did at the end of this session. All right. So if you guys are ready, let's get this show on the road and get started uh, to draw. Okay. So we're going to start off with something really simple here. And the simple shape is, of course, what we're seeing in this shape is a shark, right? But this, gives, again, it spawns an idea that maybe I didn't have before. So all I want you to do is just, again, we're just going to draw quickly. I'm not timing these. I'm just going to draw at my pace and draw quickly as we skip through this. You, you know, you might not finish your drawing, but that's okay um, if you don't. But what I want you to look at even through here, look at that nice rhythm, that, that nice flow that's happening through there. Again, don't worry about making it exact. You're just sort of like getting just some inspiration through here as you're just starting to draw it. Again, I'm just going to draw things just very sort of quickly, very loose and just see where it kind of like takes me. It's just this idea. You may be sitting there at your drawing board and saying, man, I'm so bored or I don't know what to draw. I'm having so much trouble on, on what to draw. Um, and that's something where, again, you just find just shapes like this and it can just start to spawn just new ideas. Again, build up whatever that design is going to be. You can add any little, you know, bells and whistles in there afterwards. But the main essence that I want you to get is just try to find a shape, try to find an idea and see what can come of that. All right. And again, you saw me, even though I draw that first shape, I'm still coming in and I'm adjusting little things. But don't feel you need to settle. Don't worry about the details are going to be lost when you're working on your drawings. OK, let's move to the next one here. OK, so. All right. Looking at something like this. Now, you guys may be looking at something and you see a face within there, but I'm actually seeing something behind there that is intriguing to me. And this is where all of a sudden I see this cool little shape of, um, of, of a little duck shape that's through there. So now I'm sort of seeing that and go, hey, that could be like a, a little duck. Now I'm just going to build this guy up as, as a And all of a sudden, what I'm creating in this is a whole new design. Maybe someone's just asking me just to do some uh, development, you know, whatever it may be. We need you to come up with some ducks. What I would say is grab some actual duck reference uh, that you're going to uh, just find in order to help you. And then from here, again, I could just start to build some little uh, duck character that maybe I would have never 
uh, thought of before. Again, I don't I can't even remember what a duck looks like right now. Um, but that's where where it becomes. Wow! All of a sudden, instead of going that traditional route where you might have just thought, oh, I just got to go that real traditional route with the duck, and I'm moving in that sort of direction with that long neck and everything else through there. All of a sudden, wow, this created a whole new idea. And beyond that, you say, hey, I'm really enjoying this idea. I really like where that's going, but let me see where I can push it. What if all of a sudden I just make that a little bit longer now? And now I make that a little bit smaller. Okay, and then I'm going to pull that neck in and I'm just going to get this duck's body. Again, I'm thinking about my golden section and now I'm coming. I'm going to make that just a little bit smaller there. So now I have this uh, little section through here with this duck. Again, you can change the eyes to be whatever sort of shape you want. Just again, do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You just want to think about, I'm going to draw circles. I'm going to draw squares. I'm going to draw triangles. And you put these things together. I can make it an angry duck. I can make it a happy duck. I can give this duck hair on his head. I can do whatever it is I want, but look how you can just spawn these new exciting ideas into your design, okay? Let's move on to the next. And we're gonna get progress, we're gonna get harder. I'm gonna show you some guys at the end where I'm just, this is all easy stuff, really. I'm gonna show you where we're gonna be trying to decipher patterns that I took um, at, at the end, which will be a little bit trickier, all right? This is a picture that I took, I was in a park, and I thought, God, I really, I see something in this, in this. And it almost looks like the, the cowardly lion <laughs> to me. So let's start off with, you know, think about just the shape, blocking your shapes. I, I always recommend trying to block in your shapes first. This is how I go about teaching things when I can. And actually, there's a quick video I wanted to show you, which I'm going to show you as soon as I'm done with this one, because I want you guys to really understand this principle, because it's so simple and so easy. And I think you're going to really have a greater understanding. So as I'm looking at this, I'm just seeing this guy he looks like, you know, is a little uh, sort of like sad kind of lion through there. I'm just getting that uh, feeling from this again, I'm drawing quick. I'm just, what is that quick instant thing that you're, I'm just like spotting and I'm finding? What, what, what is that? What can that be? It looks like he's got some hair on the side. Again, I can sort of like throw some other little hair down there. We've got this guy's ears in here, but look at where, where can this take you? And then you start just to add some more little details if you want, but all of a sudden I might've never ever thought about designing and creating some sort of shape off of that and building this out. So that's why we want to make sure that you do this quickly. And if you guys are familiar with my teachings from the Silver Way to where I talk about throwing up on the page, and that's what this is. We're just sort of like throwing up on the page. We're just trying to find a quick idea and see what can come of it. All right. Let me just share with you guys a really quick um, video. It's only a minute long through here. Okay, let me just uh, go through this. All right, so on my academy here, I got over 400 lessons that you can learn from. I've made them all extremely short. They're only like um, anywhere from a minute to five minutes long uh, so that everyone can learn and get some drawing done. Let me go to, I think it's on the second page here. Okay, right here. All right. So let's go ahead, just take a look at this real quick, and this will help you understand where I'm, what I'm talking about. Let me just turn my microphone. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about shape, order, distance, size. We can really use any sort of shapes. If we just look at a base shape, and we flip them upside down, we can get a whole new shape from that. So you don't just have to settle on using base shapes, but this is what we want to start off with this exercise. So as I'm going through this process, all I'm trying to do and help myself with is just trying to find that essential shape. What can that be? Through this next process, I want to start playing with order. I'm thinking about where the eyes are, where the nose may be, where the mouth may be. And through this, and then I start to think about the distance. How far away are they from each other? So I don't want to make everything so even. And now I also want to play with size. How big are the eyes? How wide is the nose? How small is the nose? How long is the mouth? 
And as we go through this over and over with whatever we end up doing within our drawing, we can create a variety of variation. This is really the most important thing that we want to concentrate and focus on. Remember, it's not about doing the details straight away. The details come last, so pay attention to that. Please go ahead and proceed with your assignment. Remember to have fun with this. Maybe you'll draw one. All right. So let me just uh, move that out of the way. So that's what I call sods, okay? So that shape, order, diff, uh, distance, and size. So those are the things that we always wanna be trying to implement into our drawing. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. All right, screaming macaroni, look at this guy. All right, so what can we do with this guy again? Try to find maybe a shape, try to, what well, all I'm doing right here is I'm drawing a whole shape. And from here, I can cut into my design and out of my design. But I like what's going on with this whole sort of eyes where it's coming. I don't know where I'm going to sort of like take this design or this character, but it's pretty funny. Um, it could, you know, it could be a fish. You know, you could add teeth in there. You could add anything in there. It could be a, could be a burglar or someone, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I'm going to add some teeth into this. It almost looks like a ninja turtle. That's where Ninja Turtles came from. I knew it. I knew there was a secret how they get became from a screaming macaroni. All right. But from here, maybe again, I might have some some little guy, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe is uh, holding again. I, what I want to do is just draw extremely uh, quickly here. I'm just drawing things. Maybe this guy's holding some gun or some sort of ray gun or something. Again, I'm just blocking things in. I like to find my energy and my pose as much as possible. Maybe this guy's running uh, through here, running through the scene. All right, it's just uh, it's just robbed the bank. Maybe he's holding a bunch of money in his hand or something through there. Okay, so finding that nice little energy, that nice little line of action that I've come through there. And once again, what you can do is just start manipulating this. What if you just take that design and you go, God, I really like that idea with this. And I'm going to take a character and just throw those eyes out through there. There's just something just a little bit fun and what sort of shape. So it's about that inspiration. Like I was inspired. So even from here, now I'm just starting just to build maybe a whole different idea of a character uh, through there. I got maybe this guy's eyes up here. He's got his bags under his eyes. Maybe this guy has a little nose through there. All right, maybe he's just got a hairstyle that looks like this. Boom, all of a sudden, a whole new idea, a whole new concept. I, was, I wasn't even thinking about that before. And now it evolved into something completely different. So the idea is don't feel that you need to follow this exactly. And the best thing to do sometimes is just not even just look at it quickly and then move on and see what it is that you can discover uh, with the rest of the drawing. Oh no, it's a poor little bathtub upside down. <laughs> what can we do with this little guy? Okay, so kind of funny, right? Again, so now I'm inspired uh, by this. So let's see what happens. I like the idea. I got this guy's little eyes that are hanging out through here, just very fun. And it's just got his, oh no, you know. And again, I'm avoiding the bowling ball. So I'm just thinking about avoiding the bowling ball. Maybe we could get some eyebrows and maybe maybe it's a little, you know, cat or a dog or something that's happening through there. So we can get the little legs just thrown through here and let, maybe let's get some ears kind of pushing back and falling back there. And maybe there's some part of his, his chest of his stomach, right? So now it's a dog that's upside down, but what if I flip this? And I flip that drawing and all of a sudden now I have this idea where I just have this shape where I'm playing with that and I'm taking the same sort of idea with this character and look all of a sudden now I, I got uh, a little character and that may, again maybe I'm going to play with some different aspects and avoid the bowling ball going to give him you know a little mouth through there take his eyes like that and boom I got a whole new concept a whole new design uh, created in order to help me with my development. So when you're doing development for studios, I think it's very important to understand that you got what they're hiring you to do is explore ideas. You can't just settle on one idea. You want to show them a variety of stuff. That's going to help them just see that, hey, this person's right for the job. They have some uh, good ideas. Let's see what we can do with this uh, character. I, I want to point something out too as I'm looking at this. 
Think about just ideas. Maybe you're having uh, trouble thinking about uh, how can I create different eye shapes, different eye ideas? Well, this becomes an idea through here where maybe that might even be just a little bit of a highlight um, in, the, in this character's eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to darken this in right here, uh, make that all sort of like dark. All right. And then I'm going to just erase this little line right there. And that sort of adds a highlight. And so imagine that's the pupil and the iris. So again, we can add a different color through here. Say that was a blue or a green that was happening through there. Well, now I've created a whole different uh, eye. Let's take his mouth. What I want to do again, always keep in mind playing around with those angles. Like I mentioned, maybe that mouth's open just a little bit more through there. Um, and then we can, again, I want to break up my golden section. So I don't just want to make this even and pull that coffee mug down here. What if all of a sudden I take this and draw something like this, pull it down just a little bit further. What sort of character could we, could we just start creating uh, through here? I, I don't know. I don't know what this character is or what it could be uh, some sort of weird thing with a bow tie uh, there. And then you start building the rest of your character and this guy's holding his little cane in his hand. All right, and uh, ta-da. All right, so we got this guy and he's got his gloves on. All right, and that's the idea too, is as you, you guys are hearing my, my, my thought process, my mind just throwing up inside my head. My mind is just saying, where can this go? What, what can actually happen? I wanna do this too. Let me see, um, hold on. I wanna see if I can do something here real quick. I wanna see if I can uh, flip this. I just wanna show you that too, because that's the importance. What happens, again, once again, if we flip it, so all of a sudden now, what do we have? Just a whole different concept here, right? So now we got this character who's sort of down here, might have his sort of big eyes, and maybe this guy's got a helmet on his head or a hat that's, you know, coming off through there, and, and his mouth is sort of open through there. And now I'm just taking, uh, you know, some other ideas that are just starting to be formed from here. Again, I don't know what this might become or what it sort of like evolves into, um, but this is something where I just feel like, okay, well, now I can maybe take off that shape and start connecting things. And again, see where it takes me. What's different about this? What's unique about it? And that's what we really just want to focus on as much as possible. All right. Let's move to the next one here. And sorry if, oh, sorry if I'm going like super fast. I just realized my microphone was in the wrong direction. Um, Let's see what we can get out of this one. And I hope you guys are enjoying this and just drawing quickly. This looks like, again, could be maybe you have to draw a bunch of robot characters uh, or something for someone's hired you to do that. These are going to be some cool little goggles that we've never seen before. And we got our character. I also like to a lot of times shift my eyes in a, in a direction, um, an opposite direction. So they're not just going forward, just to kind of help me understand what, uh, give the character a little bit more life and personality. With these things, I'm gonna just play around with these shapes through here. Maybe there's something, uh, may maybe that could be hair sort of like, you know, happening up through there, right? So again, creating a whole new concept of an idea. Maybe I wanna just change the mouth and I'm just gonna give him just a little happy face through there. And then we can, again, get, what's that, what's that body of this character gonna be? I, I don't know, just see sort of like what happens, see where it takes you as you're sort of like drawing. Maybe he's got his little hands just like hanging through there. Again, I, I don't know what this could be. And, and you guys are creative and you guys, some of you guys are CG modelers and uh, concept designers, character designers, storyboard artists. You guys are doing everything. So just think about um, things that you can sort of add and, and incorporate into your design. And maybe they, at first I thought maybe it was looking like a little elephant, the way that his ears were coming out. And that could have gone into an elephant or some other sort of character. But this is what we want to do um, whenever we're just practicing these shapes all right look at this guy this is great oh here's a great example of the golden section look at the fridge in the freezer that's happening with this one so from here now we're creating a character again this could be for a very silly crazy wacky cartoon that you're, you're designing. Maybe this guy's got some big machine guns or something going on through here. You can turn that into some blazing guns and you just start to add a bunch of little bells and whistles. And that's why I draw quickly because um, I follow 
the idea of just that it could turn into something. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I know there's potential for it and I can come back and mess with my details afterwards, all right? So that's something that I'm going to come back to afterwards, but here's the golden section where we have uh, this. Again, maybe we might separate this guy's legs a bit. Maybe this guy's wearing some Converse or some sneakers or something through here. And uh, I like his uh, face. It's got just his uh, angry sort of teeth through there. I want to be sure to avoid tangents and everything again, but I'm not worried about that right now. I know that I would fix that later. Um, I like how he's got his, you know, big eyebrows that are happening through there. His eyes are further apart. So I sort of like, like that where the eyes are further apart through there. Again, uh, so that's something. Again, you can add a nose, not add a nose, do whatever you want, you know, with your character. But again, it can turn into something where maybe the inanimate in, an object of this gym, this thing just starts to become something and it turns into something and it's uh, it could be anything. So again, have fun with these ideas, but also make sure just to, when, when you start to practice this more, make sure that you're given the character some personality, some, some feeling, some movement. Here we have like a water buffalo uh, through there. So here, what am I going to do with this one? There's a lot of moving parts. So the thing that I want to do at first is start with my big shape, start with the hierarchy of the shapes. I like how it looks like his mouth is almost like shifted off to the side. That's pretty cool. Uh, so the, this character's mouth is just like, what? What's happening? And that's another thing. I do a lot of talking in my head. That's uh, some people might think I'm crazy, but that's what you got to do when you're designing. You just kind of want to become a character and just think about a character and add the personality to the character because that's where all the fun is. Again, what, what, what is that eye shape? What can it be? Maybe an eyes like that. Maybe you might make an eye that's a little bit more like this. We can play with this. We can start to add a little bit of personality into this character by avoiding symmetry, not making everything so symmetrical in our design. And a thing that I might do at this point is get actual reference of a water buffalo, but all of a sudden I was given this brand new idea of, of a possible shape for a water buffalo just to um, do something new. You might make the nose small. You, what, if, what if we make the eyes just a lot you know, bigger through there and we take the same sort of concept and I'm doing this now and I'm just gonna make that just a lot bigger. Again, avoiding the bowling ball. So I'm doing something like this. And then I got this guy's little mouth off to the side, pulling, doing something like this. And then maybe I might have that big shape through here. And again, that sort of water buffalo aspect coming through. So now I've created, again, a whole different idea. Let your imagination run wild. And that's really what we're looking for. It's just that imagination just to be free, run wild. There is no right or wrong. And that's why I hope you guys share this on your social media. Be sure to hashtag Silver Join Academy so I can see what you guys did in this session because I want to I want to see that. And it's something I encourage all my students to do is constantly share in the community, share your artwork by sharing your artwork. And I know sometimes you feel that, God, my artwork just isn't good enough to share. It's not at the level it should be, but try not to feel that way. Just try to allow yourself just to truly um, put yourself out there because that's how you build up your confidence. And that's what we're trying to do as artists is build up our confidence in our drawing and our discipline. And the more you share your artwork, the more you give people the opportunity to just sort of see it and see where it is that you're going with your artwork. And then from there, you can just turn it into, um, it, you start to build up that, that, that confidence to where now you're gonna start sharing more and more. And that's really where I personally strive, where I wanna get you to the point where you feel so confident in your artwork that you're not only gonna share it with your, uh, with your friends and your peers, but you're sharing it with um, everyone else, all right? I'm just, Again, I, I don't have reference of a frog, but sometimes I just do, do want to mention, I, I do will say to people, get, grab reference, grab reference, grab reference. So reference is a vital tool, but I also feel like grabbing reference after the fact is helpful because then you don't get so confined to the actual reference itself, the anatomy. I've seen people where their artwork gets destroyed because they're focusing so much on the anatomy that it just doesn't allow for them to just truly just come up with something original. So it ends up looking like something we've seen before. And that's why I would say, hey, 
do it first freehand and then pull in the reference unless you're intentionally saying, listen, I really need to reference what muscles look like and everything because I'm drawing zombies and I need to know what that, what it may be or a bodybuilder or something else. All right, look at this guy with this onion. I love this. This looks like it could be a, some little Warner Brothers uh, character or something, but it's very cool. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find at this point, because there's the face, I'm going to find my eye line. I'm going to find my center line. I got my eyes that are coming through here. Again, don't feel you need to match it exactly. Uh, that's not necessarily what you want to do. You just kind of want to, you're getting an essence of this little villain onion character. Again, that's what this guy may end up being. He may be a, a villain onion. And here's a great example of not making things symmetrical. Uh, even with that mouth, I'm just going to take that. It looks like he's got like his teeth are sort of jagged. And then you say, what is inspiring me? What, where's the inspiration? Oh man, it looks like his teeth are jaggy. Okay, go for it. Throw that in there, get that idea in there. And then you can just start to build everything else from here. And then we got his face, which is going to be inside this mask. And then all of a sudden we got this, maybe this, again, I could create just a whole different idea of a character to here. Maybe I'm going to make this just a, uh, just a little, a little kid or something. I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know what kind of kid that is. That's a scary kid. Um, but let's uh, sort of like get that kid in here. And uh, I don't know, let's just throw in just for simplicity's sake, the classic arms by the side, you know, he's not, not doing anything else. Here I am. All right. So I don't, I don't know what this, what this guy is. Maybe he could be a little ninja or something here again. I want to play with golden section in this body shape right there. So maybe I don't want it cut right in the middle. Maybe I'm going to pull this guy's, uh, uh, belt or something just way up there. And now I can add some little boots to there. Again, add some little bells and whistles. Maybe there's some little horns coming out of this guy. Who knows what, what this ends up becoming. Let that imagination go wild. See what happens. See where it takes you. All right. This is a fun one. Look at this. This is a really great. There's a lot of different things going on here, but I want you to think of the golden section. So don't just make these parts on top of each other. Let's start with the basic shape. So start with the basic shape up top here. And then let's just take that and let's do another little shape on the bottom, but let's golden section it, okay? So let's get that little golden section through here. I like that it's got those little feet that look like that. It's, a, it's really interesting to me that, that those could be little feet, you know, through there. So now um, I could start building just a little bit of a creature. I love the idea that the mouth is coming off to the side. It's just kind of like, oh, feed me, feed me. And he's got that little mouth that's sort of like coming and it's sort of like open through there. And that's just kind of fun. All right. He could have his mouth through there. I like how he's got these big eyes that are just sort of on here. Again, I might turn that into a little bit of an eye coming through here. Maybe I'm going to throw that off to the side. I mean, maybe I'll come, come in, bring it in just a little bit. And then with this one, I'm going to throw this eye in here too. Just see where, again, just see where it takes me. I add a little bit of a, an upper lid on this guy. Again, I'm, I'm not committing to anything. And that's what I want you to think about more than anything is just don't, don't commit. Don't commit. Let, if you need to draw four or five of these before that happens, let that, let that sort of happen. Let that kind of evolve in, in your design. Again, I, I don't know what this is. Am I going to turn this into the client? No, this is not going to be turned into the client. You know, I do like the idea too that his eye is sort of like this. Maybe his eyeball is popping out of there. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe this is some cool little creature of some sort where his eyeballs just, they go up and down inside here. And that's how he sleeps at night. They just, those eyeballs end up dropping back into that little pocket through there, all right? So that that could be something that could end up happening with this little dude. So see what, see what happens with that. Maybe he's got a tail, why not add a little tail? Maybe he's got some bunch of, again, play around with variation. Maybe there's a bunch of little variety in all your little spikes back there. But what I'm trying to do is find feeling. I'm trying to find an energy. I'm trying to find an idea and see what comes out of it. Let's just see what sort of things that I've kind of like drawn through here so far. All right, we've got just a lot of fun little ideas that have been created already. You'll look back hopefully at the end of this session and you'll go, man, I never knew I could do that. And that's what I want you to think. I want you to think that this was impossible, but you could do it. Look at this, tree shaped like a woman. 
Okay, so something that I'm going to do on this is first thing I want to do is start with my line of action, just because I want to find that flow. So find that flow, look at that flow, that energy that's coming through there. Next thing I want to do is I like to break my shapes up when I'm doing anatomy, um, very simply, just into some simple shapes here. So this is the upper torso. And then from there, now we're going to bring into the, the hips through here as this starts to just come around. So I'm really simplifying my shapes through here. This arm is just sort of like floating. Just take a nice long line, get a nice gesture line. Just so just draw like a stick figure line. Don't worry about putting all the details. Then from there, let's build up our tubes. We always want to just think about tubes in the direction of our form through there. And then I can just start, I'm just adding those tube shapes now just to help you understand uh, what direction it is. It's like a tornado. I call this tornado posing, which is just helpful for you just to understand, the, again, the direction of the form. And look what's going on with the legs in the tree. It sort of helps us identify what direction that's sort of moving in it. So it doesn't appear so flat within the design. We've got her breasts, which are sort of like taken up here. That's just sort of like going back. The neck is back behind. Here's where that drawing through. Um, aspect is I'm going to just draw that shape look at the head turning in that little bit of a different direction now that neck is flowing this way but it's turning and then maybe again we might have uh, some you know the, the person's face just sort of like going up in that direction and then we can just start to build and improvise whatever that may end up uh, looking like you know through there and you can come back and fix your drawings afterwards. I don't want you to get so caught into, oh my God, it's like looking like crap right now. It's not working. You know, that's how I feel with a lot of my artwork. Like, oh my God, this is crap right now. This is not working. And, but I, you know what I do know? I know that I'm going to go back and fix it. And that's the most important thing just to know for yourself that you are going to go. I can always go back. It doesn't have to be right the first time. I'll come back and fix whatever it's going to be uh, later. So again, just another quick idea. That was a fun little uh, tree. So keep your eyes out, look out, look around you all the time when you're out in nature, wherever you are, Look at this thing, this uh, this skull of wires, you're right? So maybe you're, that's what you have to do. Maybe you're designing um, a character that's all of a sudden uh, coming out and it's, uh, you know, for whatever you're just trying to do and he becomes like a, a little zombie, you know, character, little skull of wires through there. And I'm just going to start to build that. And I can use all these little gadgets and all these little things just to help me. And I, I'm, right now I'm just going to draw just a bunch of little, strings and little things like that and again this is the idea that we have all those plugs in there and uh, this is happening maybe i might even show have those plugs coming out and pushing out in that direction a bit and just start to change my design and see what sort of comes from it through there as i start to build these these other aspects all these wires are connected through here maybe there's a bunch of little of these ideas through here maybe these little gadgets right there are for his knees Maybe they represent where the where the arms bend, where uh, those points of articulation are, like the, the, they're articulating through there. And I'm going to have all that come up, and then I can get my little, you know, you know, fingers and my little wires for my fingers. But you guys can see where I'm sort of like going with this, and that that's the important thing is just to really sort of figure, you know, just play around and stay loose and see where this uh, concept takes you. If you can incorporate that feeling, like I've mentioned, try to do it. If you feel like, God, I'm not at that point yet, have no fear, just draw what you see in order just to help you uh, get there. All right, look at this one. What I'm gonna do right now, cause it's 1046 already, um, I'm gonna move to some harder stuff. I just wanna show you these before I get to the hardest stuff. Cause there's some really fun uh, things going on here that are happening with these shapes. Look at this one. I just like this idea of this one. Maybe you're doing a preschool show or something, something that that's when you're designing characters, it's something that I talk a lot about in the Silver Drawing Academy is when you're designing uh, show styles and doing things like that. But things to analyze is when you look at a lot of preschool shows, the, they, they tend to have the bigger eyes. So that's something that I just want to incorporate into my uh, preschool show ideas. Maybe I have that. And then again, maybe there's that little, you know, chicken uh, through here. I'm just playing around with this guy and getting something like that. Again, avoiding my golden section in my design, playing around with something like that. 
keep it loose. I got this guy's little legs through there, you know, see, see where it sort of like takes you. You can have the mouth open, you can have it closed, do whatever it is that you like. But I, again, I was just inspired by that design to, uh, to draw something like that. All right, let's go ahead and look at some more. We're going to get into, I mean, that's really funny. I, I, I would love to keep drawing with these and I, I might come back. <laughs> they're just, they're just great. And look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this. Okay. 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 We got to draw this one. So you might just see the typewriter here, but what I see, look what's going on with this. I love this guy's hat. And then this guy's got his nose, which is coming through there, his little nose through there. He's got his mouth, which is open and his little uh, chin through there. And look at this character. Maybe his, uh, you know, is wearing one of those sort of like Russian hats or something right there. I can't remember the name of what those things are called. But again, look where, look where we can sort of like take this idea of this character and boom, before you know it, I got some sort of a uh, character that I would have, uh, you know, never maybe thought of before. And maybe I'm going to throw his, his back through there. Maybe he's got a scar for something through here. And before you know it, we got some little cool character <laughs> that's happening. Maybe it's got some little teeth coming through there. They're just missing some teeth. All right. So again, well, what can happen? Where can this go? What are ideas that I can take? How can I be inspired? What, what is it? Look beyond what we're actually seeing. And what do you see? Flip these drawings upside down. See where it sort of takes you. It doesn't get any better than that, the face on the eggplant. That's pretty hilarious. Uh, I love that. Look at this. We got the face on this milk bottle. All right. We got oh, a little, little cute dog in, uh, in the piece of wood. Uh, an owl in the tree. Uh, th this guy, this, this guy's like the Terminator. I love this guy. Okay. We got to draw this guy. And, and this is a, a thing that I teach is the teeth shape theory. Um, so this is something where you're just playing around with this when you're designing your characters to where you're going to maybe get all the aspects of your design placed within that T shape. So then I'm just starting, as I start rotating and turning my head, I start to just follow that form. But I really love where, where this guy is, is going through here, what this guy can really become. You know, he's got all these dreads, you know, he's just got like his hair dreads. I might, I might add to his face, you know, just add a little bit of a, a, a jaw, a cheekbone in through there. Okay, maybe again, I want to avoid the golden section. I could maybe break this way up here and do something like this. And now I've got this guy's sort of like mouth or something way up here. And I can just start to, maybe I'm just going to thin this guy's face just a little bit. But again, it just sort of like spawned an idea. And then from here, we can just start to get the rest of this guy's uh, attitude, whatever it is. Draw quick, draw loose, have fun with it. If you guys want to, a lot of my students do it when we do, because I meet, we meet every single week and do this. We draw every single week together, um, live, all together uh, on these drawing sessions. And what I say is like, you can post your artwork the way that you've posted it, that the way that you've um, just drawn it in the session. Otherwise, take your time and clean it up a little bit if you want to before you post it. If that's going to make you feel just a little bit more comfortable, go ahead to that. This looks like some little, you know, evil granny or something now <laughs> i don't know i don't know what this thing just sort of like became but you get have fun with it see what you can add maybe there's a goatee on this character like where did that character come come from that character came from an angry mop how fun is that oh look at this spongebob character <laughs> i love this this disenchanted purse just classic just really cool this, I, uh, yeah, just glasses, shattered glasses, <laughs> uh, face in the plant of a monkey. How great is that? A screaming pepper. All right. This was just uh, like a canyon. What can you find in that? What shapes are in there? But, okay, here we go. Here we go. This is going to be the challenge, guys. This is where, what can you see? This was when I was getting my floors redone and they ripped out the floor and I was taking pictures on my floor because I was seeing things. So what is it that you can see? in these shapes, that, that would be fascinating. So I'm just gonna draw what I see off the bat here. I just kind of see this cool little uh, dog character that's sort of like coming through here. I like these sort of like shapes, all right? He's got maybe his little legs kind of coming back here. All right, we got his eyes, you know, through here. Maybe he's looking back at something. He's got his little nose. Maybe might even make that nose a little bit bigger. You can make it smaller. You can pull it off there. But all of a sudden now, okay, I'm creating a, a whole new 
uh, sort of design. Maybe this uh, dog or something is, is, I don't know, maybe he's got a cape on or something. Maybe he's flying. Maybe he wants to be Superman. I don't know. Um, again, just that, that was just a little shape that I saw. Again, you can do anything. You can put the legs anywhere you sort of want. Again, have fun with it. See where it takes you. Maybe the body's turned in this way. And I throw his arm through there. See what I just did? I went from one and I'm just adding just different parts and seeing what can make this design a little bit more dynamic. So I'm thinking about, even when I talked about contrast and angles, we got to think about that in our negative space too. So try to always think about how you can manipulate and play with your negative space. So your negative space has angles in it too, and that's going to help your overall uh, design. So again, I don't know what, what that guy became uh, just there. Uh, let's see what else here that I kind of see. I'd almost have to flip it. You know, I got some other drawings already. I'm looking at the time and I know you guys want to do some other things and partake in other Lightbox Expo things. So let me just go to the next one here. All right, look at this one. This one was, uh, yeah, another one on the floor. Uh, I just saw something else. I see two things. <laughs> All right, so I see this little, looks like a little gerbil or something, some little guy right there. So I might play with this idea. I like that where this guy's going. Again, I'm thinking about the golden section, breaking up my golden section through there. This guy's got just a little bit of a nose. We can get his mouth through there. All right. Maybe it's, I'm going to make it uh, maybe a little cat or something through there. Then again, don't, you don't need to follow where the eyes are or anything else. You could do whatever you want. You want to make all of a sudden the eyes just really long, connect them together, try to stylize something in a different way, have fun with it, see where it kind of takes you. From there, maybe it just got this little cat's legs uh, through here. Got those and then his, get his big tail. Maybe he's got some stripes or something. Again, I don't know, that's, that's one little idea, but all of a sudden I saw this thing back here, the shape back here, where it just looks, I love that. It looks like this big old cat's eyes are just like doing something like that. I love that, that face sort of like coming through. I love that cheek. I got his little nose. Again, I'm thinking about my center line through there, my eye line. I'm going to open up that mouth again, play around with a little bit of variety uh, through there. Sort of see what happens. Open up that mouth. Get his little teeth in there. Now I can kind of connect these elements. And then again, I want to avoid my tangent. Like I, I don't know that I'd do something as extreme as that myself, but uh, maybe just something again you can add. But again, I, I would have never drawn that if I didn't see it. I, I just wouldn't have known. And that's why we want to do this and just really have, have fun with that. See where it kind of takes us. I do want to open this up to some Q&A at the end. So I am just going to um, cut this out. Oh, there's a good one. I see uh, that was just a little bit lower. There's an interesting face that I'm seeing here. This looks like I got this guy's eyes, his nose. I love that nose. He's got a nose that looks like that. He's got his nostrils. He's got his mouth. He's got his big old chin that's coming out and then maybe just goes into his neck. And I don't know what's going on with the rest of him back there. So it doesn't matter. All I know is that I'm going to now just uh, maybe just, you know, huh? What the heck is that? That's crazy. You know, so that's why I like to just sort of like think about things like that in, in my talking in my head, you know, as far as what's actually happening with this person. What's this person thinking? What are they doing? Uh, what's going on in this uh, situation? Maybe it's just got some really cool hair back there. Maybe that's what's going on. Or wavy. Maybe he's a surfer. I don't know. Sees a big giant wave. So that can turn into the character there. All right. Let's see what else we have going on here. Ooh, geez. Ooh, what do you see in there? Oh, my word. You know, there's something interesting here. There's something interesting there. I see this. I see a nice little organic flowing shape through here. I see this big shape. And it sort of has his back and it hunches and it goes and it's got a bunch of little legs. So we could draw a bunch of little legs through there. All right. Um, and, and then from there, I think you just kind of like go for it and just see what happens. <laughs> I actually see, I actually see, uh, what do I see? I see this guy and he's got his little nose and he's got this mouth that comes out through there and he's got some teeth that are like doing that. <laughs> and it's just so maybe it can be um you know like a, a casper ghost or something i don't know 
be able to know it's just that maybe he's got some bunch of little curls in his hair, something like that. I don't know. I don't know what happened to this guy that it turned into a little creature with, you know, little hands sort of happening, but there it is, you know, get again, I find that nice little flow, that nice little idea, see where it takes me. I think I always tend to draw people. Like I see people, I see dead people. I don't see dead people, but I, I see people all the time. And um, it's, you know, where some people, other people, uh, they see creatures, right? That's what you see. You're a creature designer. So that's what you see in all of this. There's something interesting going on back here with this guy. I like this, there's a shape through here. And it looks like this again, try, you can always erase your shapes afterwards. So here I'm just finding that flow. I'm finding something like this. I got a nose that looks like that. I got a mouth and it sort of like goes down like this. And his eyes are a little bit further apart and he's got his ear, you know, I'm just gonna address it there. And then maybe, I don't know, this guy's got some sort of hat on his head or something through there. And boom, there you go. There's a, maybe I add a little bit of a beard or something on this guy. I don't know. Um, but there, there, there was just a whole nother uh, little concept through there. All right. And then these are just different ones. That was a floorboard, one of my floorboards where I saw a face kind of happening um, in there. That was another shape. This almost looks like Kronk or something. You know, there's from, uh, from Emperor's New Groove. There's something just interesting there. All right. And that's it. I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now. But if you guys want to join in in the Silver Drawing Academy, we meet every week. We do Artists Anonymous, where we have discussions about life and philosophy and getting through the hard times, things we go through. We do drawing hangouts every single week with Q&As. And we do draw jams on the weekends where we're all drawing together. And you get like 400 uh, video lessons uh, and more along with that. So let me stop sharing my screen here. Let's see if there's anyone left in the room. <laughs> So, uh, hey guys. So if you guys have any questions, all you need to do is just raise your hand so I can call on you. I'm just going to unmute this, make sure that um, I make it so you guys can unmute yourselves. And if there's any questions, just go ahead and raise your hand and I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions for you guys. All right. So let me just uh, do this and see if you have any questions. Hold on here. Unmute. Okay. Does anyone have any questions out there? You know, if you don't, that's okay. That's no problem. Uh, go ahead and just, uh, just not in the screen. Don't raise your hand. Do it on the reactions so I can see uh, that you're raising your hand because there's like six windows through here. All right. I see um, Zendria, I think. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how are you? Hi. I'm so excited about this. So. You know, to finally meet you, because I've been following your Instagram for a, a while, and I really love your um, work and stuff. Thank so my question is, as we post this up on Instagram and we, like, do the hashtag and stuff, will you be looking at other people's work seeing, huh, that's interesting, I never thought of that, or, hmm, that's a really interesting take? Yeah, absolutely. That's why, especially with this exercise, I love to see that, because what you guys saw, I would have didn't imagine right so and i think that's going to be the great thing for a lot of the other people that were here today just to be able to see what oh my god how did you come up with for the angry mob you know you might have said i would have never envisioned that and this is what happens in development too where there's going to be times in development when you're in the studios where you can be given a task where they might give you a character but maybe three designers are working on the exact same concept and all of a sudden they're coming up with completely different ideas. And it happens in caricature, where you see one caricature done 20 different ways. And it's very interesting to see. But yeah, I, I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. So please do uh, share. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, by the way. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. All right, let's go to Malcolm uh, next. And then we'll go to Yvonne. And then we'll go to Pallavi. All right, so Malcolm, go ahead. Hey, Steven, I've been a big fan for a long time. Sorry, is this lighting red? Yeah, no, no, that's uh, good. For a long time, and just, uh, it was really energizing taking the session today. I was like, just out and about, and I was like, oh my God, it's one o'clock. I got to do the set, like it's one o'clock in my time zone. And right. it's been a lot of fun. I came up like just, just, just having the direct instruction, the time restraints added a lot. 
Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And I just want to encourage you guys, all of you guys, just I want you guys to get into the habit of really observing. So when you're out and about, you might take a picture of a trash can. You might take a picture of a tree. Just take your own reference pictures and create ideas from that. Because one of the biggest struggles that people have, they hear me all, all, all the time, Stephen, how do you come up with your shapes? How do you find the shape language? Well, I just kind of showed you, this is how it all sort of like comes about, but yeah. Uh, to talk to you about the, uh, I was like under Nostratude on Instagram. I was making the jokes about the fingernails. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just like, just, yeah, like taking photos or like just not being afraid to like look at things that look kind of like, oh, that's kind of interesting, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, With thank like you. Cameras and like cell phones, like you have no excuse not to record that and try to do something out of yep. it, you know? That's true. Use your camera for that. You know, it's on you all the time. <laughs> and I have the, uh, yeah, I got your book and it's, yeah, I was telling you it's exhausting, but it's really cool. <laughs> thank you so much, Malcolm. All right. up, you know that part where you have the warp? You have that guy, like the kind of like a guy with a hat? Yeah. It's kind of like and I was, I was drawing that and I realized I was like going about it totally the wrong way. I was trying to like, I was getting really tight, trying to get that guy right. But it's like, you just used a randomized, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Don't ever feel like restrain that, whether it's the right way or the wrong way. I think just kind of just do it your way, especially in the beginning, get that inspiration and then uh, move on to your own thing. All right. The the calipers you had before as well. Yeah. And those are really helpful. And then I've had the pose book, the various different pose book 3Ds and the, yeah. Well, I, Anyways, appreciate I want to take a time for everybody else. Go ahead. Thanks, Malcolm, for being here. I appreciate you being here. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let's go to Yvonne. Hi, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you doing, Yvonne? But again, where did you get all these sick ass pictures from? They're, they're Very simple. Where? Very simple. There's uh, just, you just got to go to Google and type in Paradiola, Paradiolia, and you're gonna find tons of reference. You're gonna find it all over the place. People have taken their own pictures. And uh, then of course, ones that I've taken myself, but just do, yeah, just, just research that and you're gonna find everything. I know that when I was younger and I was in college, in junior college, I just tried to draw shapes of vases and whatever I saw in the house, but I wasn't really seeing anything beyond the vase. Yeah. Beyond the shapes. Well, I see that you seem to see beyond the shapes and, and you go from there. But I just I, I just don't see beyond the shapes like that. But that's but today you did, right? Today I mean, you did. Yeah, but that's what you're all about. You're always seeing beyond the shapes. You're creating characters from shapes that you see. Yeah. And that's what I'm learning from you, you know, to yeah. go beyond the shape. Well, keep doing it, Yvonne. Just stay, just, just do that. Research that, grab and keep practicing that. I'd like to see you posting some of those in the community, okay? What is it called again? Parfanella? Yeah, go, you might need to go to the beginning. Let me, uh, actually, let me, uh, <laughs> it's called Paradiolia. Let me just spell it because it's, uh, it's, it's, weird. Uh, it's a weird name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I'm just going to uh, just grab. Okay, so it's uh, P A R. Actually, I'm going to type it in the message here so everyone can see it. All right. Uh, P, oh, am I spelling it? Yeah, P A R E I D O L I A, Paradiolia. Wow, that is just awesome! Like, All right, so thanks, Yvonne. Amazing, <laughs> thanks. I'm, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna move on to uh, uh, pa, 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 uh Palavi. Palavi, hey, how are you? Hi, Stephen. Thank you so much. I'm good. I really want to thank you for this really powerful session because my hands were frozen before the session. I wasn't drawing for quite a while, but this kind of helped me restore a bit of confidence yes. so I can start drawing again. Love it. Um, I also, like, my, my question is about, like, I like doing caricatures of uh, people and I like to draw faces mostly because I think I'm a little bit scared of, like, the rest of the body. I do that, but then the whole it, it lacks the energy and the dynamism the weight is not there it's off sometimes so do you have any tips for that and also in the face I get the forms right but the expressions I think I that expression is not as uh, exaggerated as it could be sometimes if I have pictures of people I want to caricature uh, I want to cartoon or I want to 
like um, the caricatures of them. Okay, yeah. So in, in regards to that question with, with the faces, it, and it always becomes a real dedication where you're really committing and you got to say that I struggle with this. So the fact that you've identified your struggle is one of the most important things you can do. And so from there, I, I would start to separate and, and I'm going to bring this up with my other point is creating different sketchbooks. Okay. And why I want you to create different sketchbooks is because these sketchbooks become your own little guide where you're just focusing solely your attention to that and you're not go going all over the place. So with expressions, you just, again, go to Google and just commit to start. You're looking at um, just type in facial expressions or you type in people screaming or people excited or people, whatever it may be. Start just going through the process of caricature that you know, building up the forms, but make it a commitment just to commit to that. Maybe you're doing it for 10 minutes every single day, uh, something like that with the bodies. What I did, I was in the exact same situation as you as a caricature artist. That's all I would do was the face. And I neglected the human figure, neglected the body, and I suffered because of it. So I started to grab sketchbooks and I dedicated those sketchbooks only to drawing human figures. And I wrote on my sketchbook, this is just for drawing the full bodies. And then I would take that sketchbook. And when I was out in public, all I had to commit, there was no, no, Stephen, don't get distracted by just falling in love with that person's face. You have to draw the full action. That person's pushing the shopping cart. That person's sitting down, looking at their phone, reading a book, whatever it is, and make that commitment. And that's the only way to break through this hurdle is through repetition. It's the only way where you're doing this stuff over and over again. And that's going to eventually start to build up your confidence. You'll start to see yourself grow. I would encourage you to take a figure drawing class, a live one. Um, if you can, just enroll in doing gestures doing mm -hmm. something like that. Otherwise, if you don't, can't do that, again, the best resource is real life. Just go to the airport, go to the park, go to the coffee shop and just keep drawing people. Don't spend tons of time on it. Do, do this quick method of just drawing it really quick, really fast, and those will really help you, okay? Thank you so much. All Thank right, you. you bet. Thank you. All right, let's go to Luke and then we'll go to Brandon. Hi, good afternoon, Stephen hey, from the uh, Northeast. Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks for a great session. Um, I wanted to clarify something because um, I saw on your page that I follow, you currently have the 20% off the annual membership um, with the light box code that expires tomorrow. Yes. But it's in some of the screens uh, today, I saw another dis uh, code drawing shapes. Yeah, that was, um, for, that was for this, uh, this, that was for this session. Uh, oh yeah so just because it was dipped from the people who would just see that that one that i showed today just expires at the end of next week the the one that you saw on uh my light box ends on sunday it was just like for the light people who are seeing me on light box on my instagram and everything else will they'll get the the, the discount just till tomorrow but the people who are here today because you guys showed up will get it till the end of next week so, okay, I'm glad you mentioned that. So on my social media, if I'm going to refer, you know, visitors and my friends to you, the drawing shapes gives them more time to save until next week, right? Yeah. Yes. So, so it, do I, can I share that code? Yeah, you know yeah, I would love to. And I love cool. all you guys too. That would be awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. All right. Let's go to Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Uh, hey, Steven. It's great to hear from you. See you. I know, I, I just want to say I had a great session, by the way, and I'm going to post these things after the session, you know, great. and I'm, and you know, because it's been a tough couple of months because I, I lost my mom about a couple of months ago, you know, and, Sorry, and I was kind of a little bit lost in the, in my art a little bit, but I've been starting now, and I'm really glad I came to this session today, Good. This today, and, and I really hope we can do another of these, uh, para, uh, paradolia things, you know, and I'm going to try to do the things you told us today, like take more photos of these objects and stuff. And how often should we do this? You know, should we do this every day? 
You know, I, I always encourage everyday drawing. I, I Something that I really express to my students is please just even just do 10 minutes a day. Even if you, you know, you're, if you go to work and you have work long days or anything else that may happen, if you're at least spending 10 minutes a day, that ends up being and your Monday through Friday, let's say that's 50 minutes, that's an hour a week that you're dedicating. And I, I, you know, of course I would say if you can spend more time, but at least do that. And that's something that I would highly recommend recommend that you do is yeah do this because it's going to keep building your confidence and I think um, in for yourself in the situation and knowing that this is helping you through the loss of your mom and I'm so sorry to hear that and I but I think it really is important to be active right just to do stuff just to keep your hand moving stay engaged so I want you to look around your house too don't you don't have to be outside open up your cabinets <laughs> look in front of where your bathroom is whatever just take pictures of things and turn Turn your camera and see if you can spot ideas and just allow yourself to explore that. But that'll be very helpful. Thank you so much. And it's going to help me get my portfolio almost completed soon. Thank you so much, right. Stephen. All Great right. to hear from you. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you. All right, guys. I think that was all the questions. I don't see any other hands uh, raised right now. So um, I think that was. I think that was it. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for being a part of this. This will be on my YouTube channel as well, and I know it's going to be on the light box. So if you want to rewatch this, you can watch it. And for you guys who are members of the academy right now, it's going to be on there too, so you guys can watch it. And of course, we'll be doing uh, stuff like this every week. All right. So thank you guys for being here and um have, have a great rest of a uh, light box experience okay thank right. you take care see ya thanks so much thank you thank, thank you, you so much, much.